again, he was the result tonight a little bit more frustrating given that a, a lot of it was by your own hand with the 19 turnovers and allowing 20 O boards because it seemed like when you guys were up and rolling, um, it was very, very competitive between the two teams. Yeah, look, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can control in the game tonight and when you give a team 39 additional possessions, like 20 O boards and 19 turnovers, the mountain of possession begins to take it toll, take its toll at some point in the game. Um, but, you know, we we dug ourselves a hole in the third quarter with, I think we had seven turnovers in our first 11 or 12 possessions. But, you know, on the back of DJ Mitchell, we, we kind of found some energy and got back in the game. But then we just have breakdowns defensively. We overhelp off Barlow, three ball, like Goulding, who's still an incredible basketball player and incredible shooter like he sticks four threes in the in the third quarter um has 14 points in the third to, to break it open so there's a lot of things that we can control um a lot of uh like attention to detail on scout that we just when we don't concentrate is it a product of fatigue third game of the week like i i, I don't know um I don't have a good answer to that right now, but there's some aspects where we just need to be better. In saying all that, um, for me, I, I need to be better as a coach in terms of giving the guys direction offensively and finding ways for us to score when things get hard. Um, I think I'd, I've done a poor job of that tonight and also in Adelaide. Um, so for me, going away and doing my homework and improving as a coach and trying to help these guys just be a little bit more fluid Offensively, when things get hard, when the physicality gets cranked up at the defensive end, like we just we get bogged down, and then it impacts the defensive end of the floor. So, um, a lot of it sits on my shoulders uh, in terms of helping us be better. But there is some really controllable things that are a lot of the time just concentration, effort areas where we break down and we we let ourselves down on the, the hard work that we do. Um, uh, the play that sticks out, you know, Sobs chases Goulding around three, four screens, switches onto Barlow, contests, and we give up an O-board for a tip-in. Like, um, in the fourth, I think it was, nearly gets a tip-in after we'd kind of made some inroads again. Like, it's just those momentum plays which break our back. So, um, a lot of ways we can be better, uh, but I thought we competed. I thought the intent was good. Um, and like I said, I, I need to be better in terms of helping the guys execute. Um, how close was Baines to playing? And second part of that question, how good was... He was outstanding, I thought, but I think 18 points, 13 boards, he, he really filled the void in great style. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bangers was close. Um, you know, he picked up the cork in Adelaide. He's, he's, he's a little bit beat up. You know, the, the back he missed the four games with and still managing that through. Um, look, had it been a playoff game, he probably goes. Um, but we've got a game Thursday night and then we, we kind of play every uh, third or fourth day from there. So, you know, decision... Like, is it better to miss this one? And he's not quite there. And if he plays, does he get hurt? And does it make it worse? And we don't have him for, for the stretch um, that we're moving into. So, look, yeah, he was close, um, but not quite there. But, yeah, Gak, again, terrific. Plays 31 minutes, uh, 18 and 13, two steals, a block, a couple of assists. Like, his rim presence and um, his activity just keeps going up and up and up. Um, you know, he's finding his voice defensively, like like T can probably speak to it in terms of where G was at the start of the year to where he's at now with his voice on the defensive end is, is really positive. So, yeah, he's he's an exciting young athlete and he's he's going to keep getting better the, the more he gets to play in this league. So, Baines are playing with cans on Thursday? That's the plan, yeah. So, for the second game this year, we'll have our 11 contracted players. Thank you, guys. That's all from me. I hope you didn't, get, didn't just jinx it, Greg. So let's hope everyone does get through to, to, to Thursday night. But DJ Mitchell is the other great positive out of this season. How 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 impressed have you been with his growth since he since he arrived? Yeah, look, DJ, um, he come in the bench, come off the bench, and didn't play a lot in the first half, and came in and took his opportunity in the in the third and fourth quarters tonight. You know, 16 points in 16 minutes. He, he can really put the ball in the basket. Like, that's one thing that DJ can do. And sometimes he, he bails out our offense and, and makes a play that out of nothing when, when things are looking bad. Um, you know, DJ's got a lot of growth to go in terms of, um, you know, his, his attention to detail at times on the defensive end, um, some communication things. And, and 
the, the great thing about DJ is he wants to learn. Like he has an appetite for information and, and knowledge and how can he help? How can he impact the game? Like he's always asking the right questions and he's a worker. Like the kid doesn't take a day off. Um, he gets his shots, he watches his film. You know, I think he's got a really bright future and, and, he, and he gave us a spark tonight when we need it. So really happy for what he's done this year and, you know, we'll, we'll keep giving him opportunities and keep working with him on the day-to-day -to, -day to, to help him be a better basketball player. Tyler, what are your sort of reflections on that game this afternoon? What did you, what did you make of it? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's pretty similar. I think, uh, I think it was pretty apparent we got beat up um, on the boards. And it just it just gave them life. I think when we were we were competing on the defensive end, um, you know, Van used the Sobes play for reference. But I think if you go back and watch it, there's probably three or four times, maybe even more than that, where it was just guys giving good defensive effort and then just you know back breaking offensive board or tip in or extra effort, and then you got to guard another 24 seconds. So um, from that perspective, I think that uh, I think that. You know, you can, Vandy's taking a lot of um, the heat for maybe not having, thinking he didn't have us prepared. But there's not a lot you can do for that. That's just an, that's that's effort. And uh, so it, I think that's all the guys looking at ourselves in the locker room, and understanding that you know we can have all the scout, we can have all the video that we want. But when we're on the court, what are we gonna do when things get really hard? You know, are we just gonna be like, oh well, you know, it's just their night tonight, or? You know, are we going to dig in and make that extra effort, make that extra box out, or come over the top when you see somebody boxing out? So, um, from that perspective, it's you know, I know Vandy's a he's a great guy and a great coach. Like, he's gonna he's he wants to help us get better. But from a lot of these perspectives, there's not a lot you can you can't really coach effort. You know, so from that perspective, that's on the guys in the locker room. How are you feeling about your own game? Three games back now from the injury. You've been playing playing pretty well, but how do you feel about your own game personally? I think that's just been the story of the season, just pretty well, you know. Just uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in uh, in myself just as far as from the perspective of, um, you know, we've had a lot of changeover and a lot of uh, a lot of things happen this season. And, um, you know, I, I think from being a guy who's had some of the most experience in the locker room, um, um, I feel like I've, I've let the team down in the sense of um, maybe being a little bit more of a stabilizer. You know, I, some of the on-court stuff, like, yeah, I mean, there's going to be good nights and then there's going to be good nights where it's a little bit tougher. Um, but being just more of a stabilizer in some of those, those tough moments, um, I know it, it, a lot of this stuff is, is new to me, but at the same time, um, I've been through a lot as a basketball player. So from that perspective, um, I feel like um, I, I could have been better during this stretch. Yeah, I think despite that, I mean, it's always going to take some time to adjust to playing in a new country and a, and a new league. So what do you hope to get out of these last nine games for you personally? And I guess what do you hope to, to provide for, for the team? Uh, that, just some stability. Um, allowing these young guys to continue to develop. They've been doing a, a great job. Um, continue to... Um, encourage uh, some of those guys who um, feel like, you know, maybe they should be, should be getting more opportunity. Like you saw, DJ didn't maybe have – he wasn't really in the role he wanted to be in maybe the last couple games and then comes in and has a positive attitude. And, you know, for a while there, we, we've almost turned it to where we had the momentum just off of some of the plays that he was making. So just continuing to instill – um, confidence in some of these young guys so that way um, you know they can go on and continue to have uh, great careers whether it be here or, or in other places. And Greg just last one from me what are your thoughts now on the Taipans on Thursday night? Yeah look um, we haven't we're 0-6 in our last six games against Cairns going back into 0-4 last year or 0-2 this year so Look, we're at the point now where <clears throat> every game has a lot riding on it. We've got nine games left. We're five and 14. Um, to give yourself a shot, I think at the plane, you've got to be 13 and 15 or 14 and 14. I think that's kind of the, um, the the number that exists there. But like we can't look that far ahead. So looking ahead to Cairns, obviously dynamic team, a lot of scoring, a lot of shooting. Uh, I, I'm not sure if Pinder will play or not. Um, you know, so Pinder's out. You know, it changes them immensely, but 
you look at what they did last night against Adelaide down 18 in the fourth, like they're a desperate team that's playing with a lot of confidence. Um, Forty's got them up and about. They're physical. You know, they play with a lot of pace, a lot of energy. So for us, I think the, the most important thing right now is we go and reflect on ourselves, um, look at what we've done tonight, how do we be a little bit better, um, and then we turn our focus to Cairns on Tuesday and Wednesday leading to that Thursday game. Thanks very much, guys. Sweet. Thank you.